Tonight, if you have your Bibles, I invite you to join me in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I want to share with you the story, a familiar story in the Bible about David and Goliath. And I believe that in this account, there is a prophetic word for you. There is something that God has for you, your life, and the nation of Myanmar. I want to speak on the subject run to the battle. What I want you to know the the battle is not in Myanmar, the battle is for Myanmar. Some of you think the battle is over there back in your country. But I want to suggest to you by you coming here you ran to the battle. For you see, the battle is a spiritual battle. The battle we must win is a spiritual battle. The devil loves to lie to you. He wants to lie to you that the country will never turn around. He wants to put a lie in your heart that you can't do anything about it. He wants to put a lie in our heart to just accept it as it is right now. But that is the devil and he is a liar. We must run to the battle. We only win battles that we run to. And here in 1 Samuel chapter 17, we have the account of David and Goliath. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 4 and following. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. The height was six cubits and a span. Verse 5. He had a bronze helmet on his head, wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing five thousand shekels. Verse 6. On his legs he wore greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. Verse 7. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and an iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer 
went ahead of him. Now for a moment, I want you to pause and look at these verses again with me. I want you to notice in verse number five, it says that Goliath had a coat of scale armor. Scale armor. What has scales on it? A serpent. I believe that we're fixing to see that this story has a greater meaning. A serpent has scales on it. Both in Genesis and Revelation, Satan is depicted as a serpent. So not only did he wear a coat like a serpent, I want you to notice in verse number four, the mention of six. His height was six cubits. In verse 5, 6, and 7, it mentions there were six pieces of armor. It says he had a coat of armor. He had a helmet on his head. On his legs, he wore coverings. Number four, a javelin. Number five, a spear. Number six, he had a shield. Verse number seven said the point, the point on, on, his, on his spear weighed 600 shekels. So here he is, Goliath, a coat that looks like a serpent, and in mentioned six, six, six are assigned to him. I believe God is showing us in this story it's bigger and more significant than just a battle between David and Goliath. It is a spiritual battle every believer is fighting. The number of the serpent of revelation is six, six, six. Number 
So here we have an adversary, an enemy that David is fighting that is symbolic of the spiritual battle that's happening in our world. And I want to suggest that's happening in your nation. Dimas spiritual warfare in our world today there is hate there is division there is conflict there is a spirit of self-interest there is a spirit of perversion in our world today we are fighting a spiritual battle the Bible tells us that David arrives at the battle and this enemy this enemy Goliath he is taunting the Hebrew people God's people he is telling them they're worthless in fact, the Bible says in Revelation, excuse me, 1 Samuel 17 and 11, upon hearing the words of Goliath, that the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Fear is a weapon of Satan. He wants to get the body of Christ, believers, Christians today in fear. Afraid to stand up, afraid to speak out, afraid to believe God. You cannot, you cannot co uh, correct what you're unwilling to, con to confront. If we as God's people are not willing to confront the evil, the sin, the hate, we will never conquer it. David arrives on the scene. All of Israel is afraid and they're backing up. David steps forward. And he declares. Don't lose heart. And I came to tell you tonight, don't lose heart. Don't be fearful. Don't be intimidated. Stand up. Demons. Demons are not afraid of soft sermons. Demons are not afraid of beautiful buildings. Demons are not afraid of self-absorbed Christians. But demons tremble in the presence of people filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and people that will run to the battle. Run to the battle.
What we must remember. What we permit will always continue. Whatever we permit, whatever we ignore, whatever we back up, whatever territory we give Satan, the devil, he's going to take it and more. We say amen. My amen is always in agreement with God. When you say amen, you're saying, God, I agree with you. But I want to also suggest when we say amen, we're also saying to the devil, no more. Every time you say amen, you're saying, Yes to God, and you're saying no to Satan. No. You can't have my family. No. No. You can't have my nation. No. You can't have my future. No devil. No devil. No devil. The scripture says that Goliath came forward and he spoke, criticized God's people. He criticized them. It says in verse number eight, Goliath stood and he shouted at Israel. Oh, he was shouting at Israel and he was telling Israel, you're of no value. Has the devil ever told you you're of no value? Has the devil ever told you you're not good enough? Has the devil ever, ever told you there's no hope? Has the devil ever told you you're not worth it? Last year, Pastor Sarah, when I was here in Malaysia, I was going to the Philippines to preach a meeting. So I flew to the Philippines to Manila and I taught and I preached there for a week. I went back to the airport and I was flying from, from Manila, the Philippines, back here to Kuala Lumpur. I had my boarding pass. I had I had my passport. So I went through the immigration line and I passed the immigration line. My next step at the airport was security. I walked around the corner and oh my, oh my. The security line was back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It was as far as from the platform to the back of this auditorium. And it went back and forth and back and forth. There were hundreds of people in the security line. And I was thinking, I'm going to be late for my flight. I'm not going to get to my flight on time. I've got to get there in this long security line. I don't know if I'll be able to get through it. So I got in line and I stood there. The line moves a little bit. The line moves a little bit. And then this lady, she walks along the side. 
And she points at me. She, and she says, she motions me to come there. I said, me? She shook her head. Yes, you, you, you. you. So I, I, I got my bag. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. She opens the little, the little strap there and I step through and she locks it. And, and she takes me all the way to the front of the line. Yes. To the front of the line. And I'm thinking, she thinks I'm a movie star. Yeah. Yes. She thinks I'm Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber? She, she must think I'm Brad Pitt. She, yeah, she took me out of line and took me all the way to the front. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Yes. And I'm walking by and waving at the people. And I go all the way in front. She, she, she takes me all the way to the front, and here's what she says. We have a shorter line for old people. <laughs> old people! I went from feeling like I was important to feeling like I was nothing. The devil wants you to think you're a nobody. The devil wants you to think that you're a nobody. The Bible says that Goliath, verse number eight, he devalued the Israelite God's people's purpose. Verse number eight. He's, he said to them, you, you can't come out to battle. You can't come. You're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You can't do this. You, you, you can't go to D, D, uh, UMC. You'll never make it. You can't serve God. It won't work out. He always wants to devalue your purpose. He devalued their loyalty. Verse number eight, Goliath said, Am I, I'm a Philistine, and you're a servant of Saul. He devalued them. What he was telling them, it's no use for you to serve, no use for you to try. Your king can't do it. You can't do it. I'm in control here. Hear me. Hear me. There's some of you that the devil has told you you're not loyal to your family because you came here. He wants to devalue you. He devalued their confidence. Again in verse number eight. Choose a man and have him come down here. Well, they didn't have a man. He was saying, you're not able to. You can't do it. Verse number nine. A Goliath devalued their future. 
He said, if, if, if somebody's able to come out, let him come out and I'll kill him and I will take control and you will serve us all of your life. Does the devil tell you you have no future? Is the devil telling you that your dreams, your goals, your purpose, what you plan for in your life is all gone now? Is he devaluing your future? He devalued their commitments. He got up there and he said, this day, he said, I defy God and I defy the ranks of Israel. That's what Goliath said. He, he devalued their commitment to God. The devil will tell you there's no use to pray. He's going to tell you there's no use to give. There's no use in believing. Next, he devalued their destiny. Verse 44, their destiny. He said, Goliath says, I will give the birds of the air. They're going to eat your flesh and consume you. In other words, there's no future for you whatsoever. So here was Goliath. He was out on the battle line. And the Bible said he was shouting at Israel, send somebody out and I will kill them. I will control and Israel is nothing. He devalued them. But the Bible tells us that David stepped up and he said to Goliath, he said, you come with me with sword and shield. But I came, I come against you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. So, here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to say. Shout back at the voices shouting at you. Shout back at the voices shouting at you. Declare, I have a future. I have a hope. I will overcome. God will heal my land. God will give me my land back. Shout back at the voices shouting at you. Shout back. Don't give up. There comes a day. There comes a day. When fear. Doubt. Doubt. Insecurity. Hopelessness will come against you. And you've got to shout back. I pastor a church in San Antonio, Texas. While pastoring the church, I also at times do volunteer work at the hospital. I go down to the hospital and I volunteer in the emergency ward unit. 
emergency ward ma chano ha no a two lunari a yebo lunari lare niya ma chano se khambe de and as a volunteer chaplain my duty is if there is an emergency that comes in chano ye alo ga chano volunteer alo de ya di a yebo lunari win la ye I step into the emergency room where the doctors are working on the patient and I pray with them. When their, when their family arrives at the hospital, they've heard that they're hurt or wounded or, or broke a leg or whatever the case. When the family comes and they're in the waiting room, Part of my responsibility is to pray with the patient, but it's also to go out and speak with the family and tell the family, I have prayed with your family member. They're all right. The doctor is looking at them. ตุ้ยเนาะลูนาตั้วเจอเนาะสุดตองเปียดาဖြစ်ตะโลปี้ตั้วยิน Friday night I'm there I'm serving as the volunteer chaplain. An emergency telephone call came in to the emergency room. An ambulance is rushing a patient there. It was an 11-year-old little girl. 11-year-old little girl. It was a gunshot wound. A drive-by shooting. Somebody was driving by, shot a gun, and struck an 11-year-old little girl right, right in the forehead with a bullet. The moment they, they came in with the little girl, a team of doctors and nurses raced around her. Doctors were calling out orders. Nurses were running. As they, they, were, they were working on her feverishly to try to save her life. I still remember the little girl coming in and passing by and they taking her into the emergency examination room. I recall the doctor saying as he looked at her, we have an entry wound from a bullet right in the middle of her forehead right here. The doctor said we have the exit wound in the back of her head. The bullet struck her here and the bullet came out the back of her head. The the doctor said they didn't know if she was going to live or ever have brain function. As a chaplain, it's now my duty to go talk to the family. I I go out and I talk to the family. The grandmother is there, and we usher the grandmother into a side room. If they ever move a family member into a side room, it's usually the worst news. The 
The 11 year old girl was at her grandmother's house when she was shot. Just a few minutes after that, the mother came in. She had no idea what had happened. She arrives at the hospital. She gets a call. She walks into the room and she's, she's wanting to know what happens. Just as that she walks in, the doctor walks into the room. The doctor said to the mother, your little girl has been shot in the head. We have an entry wound. We have an exit wound in the back of her skull. We don't know if there's how serious the brain damage is. We don't know if she'll ever walk, talk, or even live through the night. At that moment, the mother wailed, wailed, and she fell back in her chair, just overwhelmed with grief. And I could hear the racking sobs of her tears as she began to weep. She's weeping. More family members are coming in the room and hearing the story. And the moment they hear the story, there is a wail and a cry out of grief. They're going to lose their 11 year old daughter. The devil will try to steal, kill, and destroy. But there is a day in your life that you've just got to shout back at the voices shouting at you. I gathered those family members in the room. I don't know what kind of faith they are. I don't even know if they believe in God. I don't ask them. I just say, I'm going to lead you in prayer and we're going to call upon the name of the Lord. We're going to shout back at death. We're going to shout back at what the enemy's trying to steal from you. I gathered with them in the room and we had prayer. We had prayer. The family is expecting the worst. The doctor is expecting the worst. So I'm going back and forth to the emergency room where they're treating the little girl back to the family. And I walk back into the room where they're treating her. And as I walk back in to the room. I hear the doctors talking. They're looking at an x-ray of this little girl's head. Other doctors start coming and looking over here. Nurses are coming. And here is an x-ray picture of this little girl's head. And doctors are pointing to it. And conversations are going around the, around the team of doctors right then. And here's what the doctor said. He pointed and he said, we have an entry wound. He pointed, he said, we have an exit wound. But that bullet never went through her head. That bullet 
Where did it go? It hit here. It came out here. There's no hole in her skull. There's no brain damage. She's good. Release her. She's completely ready to go home with no damage whatsoever. <laughs> I'm, I'm with the doctor when the doctor walks back into the room to the family they're expecting the worst news and here's what the doctor said ma'am your daughter is well your daughter can go home here's the only thing I can explain to you the doctor said that bullet must have hit her skull bounced off traveled between the skull and the skin <laughs> and came out here. He says, that's the only way I can explain it. And they took that little girl out. And I'm saying, doctor, you may explain it that way, but I know a God in heaven that steps in and he heals and he delivers and he does miracles. There's a moment you've got to shout back at the voices that are shouting at you. Believe God for your family. Believe God for your nation. Don't give up. God can do it. ကျွန်တော်ဆရာဝင်ကိုပြောလိုက်တယ်ဆရာဝင်ခမြတော့အလို့ရှင်းပြပြမယ်ကျွန်တော်ကတော့ကျွန်တော်ဖရားကဒီ
I'm going to bring this to a close. <laughs> David kills Goliath. I think it's significant that when he throws the stone, it strikes Goliath where? Where? The forehead. Yes, yes. Remember what was Goliath? He's the serpent. Remember that? Yes. The, the six, 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 remember? Where does the Bible say that the mark of the beast will be at? The very spot the enemy wants to destroy you, you're going to destroy him. <laughs> it says in 1 Samuel 17 and 54, David took the Philistine's head and brought it to Jerusalem and he put the Philistine's weapon in his own tent. He took Goliath's own sword and he cut off Goliath's head. And he took the head, the head of the serpent, the head of the enemy. And where did he take it? He carried it to where? Jerusalem. To where? Jerusalem. 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 The interesting thing about this, Pastor Sarah. There's something interesting in the text. The Bible said he carried it to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. But wait a minute. Jerusalem didn't exist yet. It would be later. It would be much later before the city of Jerusalem is actually the city of Jerusalem. So, how, how do you carry the head of of the enemy to a city that doesn't exist yet. Here it is. Here it is. God will do something now and you carry it to the promised place that he's going to give you later. And here, here's what I want to tell you. God's going to give you your land back. God will give you your country back. Carry it forward. Carry it forward. It may not be yours yet. It, there, there may not be peace in your country yet. There may not be tranquility in your country yet. Things, the war may not be over yet. You just carry it on and say, God, I'm going to believe that you're going to give it to me. Do you know what David didn't say? Here's what he didn't say. Well, I'm going to carry it until God does something. I'm going to carry it to a, to a place somewhere. 
I'm going to carry it off. No, he said, the city doesn't exist in reality, but it's still in my heart. There is still a city in my heart called Jerusalem that's going to be the place of worship, that's going to be the place where God is going to be honored. It doesn't exist yet, but I'm going to carry, and I'm going to hold on to the promise. That's what I want to tell you tonight. Hold on to God's promise. Jerusalem, 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 Every time you gather in service, you know what you're doing? You're carrying. You're carrying the promise to what God is going to do. Do you know what I thought to myself when worship started? Brother, you came out here and you were leading us in worship. People filled this altar and people began to shout. You know what I said? They're carrying it to their promised land. They're going to carry it back. They're carrying God's promise. They haven't given up. They haven't let go. They're carrying it forward to their Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. So as I close this message, I want to encourage you with this one thought. Run to the battle. Run to the battle. Run. Don't give up. Don't give up on God's promise. Would you stand together with me?